Welcome back to another Premise Log episode. My name is Jonathan, and what we're gonna be covering today is something a little bit different. So I asked on YouTube here and on Facebook whether or not people would be interested in a Google SEO video. So what we're gonna do is take a look behind the scenes of a website that we built on stream here a couple of months ago for my best friend's coffee shop. Now, this is a real business that's located in Mariester, Florida. And essentially what we've done is uh, built the website and set up a Google business listing and it's just been absolutely popping off. So I want to give you guys a look behind the scenes. Obviously I have permission to do this, but I want to convey how incredibly powerful the Google local listings can be for a number of reasons. First of all, they're extremely easy to set up, really easy to optimize. They typically can be done with very little budget and that they can start to show results pretty much immediately, which is absolutely incredible. So this particular business has been now open for seven business days. That's it. So just a week and the numbers are already insane for them, not only in terms of actual business and customers in the store, but what Google is showing us is very consistent with that. So what we're going to do is just talk about what we've done there, kind of some strategies for how you can optimize business listings, whether for yourself or for clients, and also how you could consider selling this as a service in your agency. Hey, if you're not already subscribed, please consider doing so. It really does help me tremendously and I very much appreciate it. Now I'm gonna let you get back to the content. So here's the website that we built. Uh, it does look a bit different than before. We have a number of real photos on the site as compared to a bunch of the placeholder ones before. And this is the actual business address and the, the business listing from Google that we've embedded in a map here. So there is some downside for page load speed here, but I think it's incredibly valuable to have this real map. Now, of course, like I mentioned before, you guys watch me build this live on stream, and there's a couple of things that we've made extremely consistent with this listing now. So, of course, if you've heard anything about local SEO, you've probably heard the phrase NAP or NAP, name, address, phone number, which needs to be super consistent across the entire site. So what you'll notice is I have the address here. This is, of course, the text element that then links to the Google Maps listing. We also have the real phone number, and that's on there as well. And then of course we have the business name in various places across the site. And those of course need to be super consistent across your entire site because that is a ranking factor in Google's eyes. Now, I did get carried away here on this actual page. I kind of showed you the look at it and what we've done so far. Uh, but what I wanted to talk about just quickly is what are we actually discussing here today? So the local listing is if you type in any sort of city related keyword, even if you're looking for a service or a product, typically you're gonna get the map results that look something like this. Now, of course, we have some national brands here, and then there we have the Fair and V Coffee Roastery. The name, if you're curious, is a German word, so you can go look up what it means. It's a very cool vibe and why the coffees are all, uh, you know, coffees from around the world at the business. So it's a really, really neat thing. I'll let you guys explore that. Back to my point though, what we're actually trying to do is understand what makes these listings show up and what can you do in your business or your clients to make it pop up here. So there's a number of things for us to dig into here. Reviews is gonna be a big one. Physical proximity is a big one. And of course you can't control that, but that is a big factor in your local results. And we're gonna look at some of those search engine ranking factors now. So of course you've probably heard of moz.com if you're interested in SEO at all, but they have this really handy ranking factors tool. And I'll be honest, this is from 2018, so things do change. But in essence, these are still very, very relevant even in 2021 and beyond. So of course your number one factor here is going to be your Google My Business Signals. So you can see proximity, like I mentioned, unfortunately you're not gonna be able to do anything about where the searcher is physically. But like for instance, in the case of my agency, there's not a lot of competition in my area. So I pop up in other cities outside of my area that I haven't even necessarily optimized for. The other one, as you can see here, is the categories. And that's going to be what category have you chosen? Is it relevant to your business? So of course we've chosen coffee shop in our Google business listing for Fair and V. Keyword in business title. This just of course happened organically because the company is called Fair and V Coffee Roastery. So when somebody types in their city name, which is Mary Esther, and then the word coffee, it just kind of all ties together. Now link signals for us is not something that's playing a huge part here because this is a brand new business, brand new website. And so there's not a whole lot that exists currently in that arena. 
What this would be is you having backlinks from other websites, which of course can happen organically over time. Or of course you can buy them if you're in that game of SEO. But uh, for us, this is not a, a factor that we're really considering at this time because that's just not something that's happened yet. So we're not worried about that one. Now review signals is another big one. I always tell people physical proximity, reviews and photos are the things you need to focus on most. Now these reviews, you can see quantity, velocity, obviously how quickly are they coming in. The diversity is a little bit vague, but what I believe is considered in that diversity metric is are these people from a broad range of demographics? Do they have reviews for other businesses? Are they consistently on Google? I think all those th things are sort of quietly melded behind the scenes and that kind of dictates what they mean by the review diversity. Now the next one is on-page signals. So you can see there's that nap phrase that I was talking about earlier. So name, address, and phone number. Your keyword in your title tag. So of course, in my title tag here, I have Coffee Shop Mariester, Florida. I also have Coffee Shop Fort Walton Beach, which to be honest, I probably need to change, but Fort Walton is the bigger city that kind of encompasses Mariester. Domain authority is another one, and that's gonna be tied into your link signals, which as I mentioned, we just don't have any link signals right now. People aren't yet writing written reviews of this on their blogs or you know travel sites, which I, will, I, I think that will happen in the future, but it's not happened yet. So domain authority is not really playing a part because our domain is essentially brand new. So citation signals is another really big one. So there are services out there where you can essentially pay to have these citations cleaned up and created for you. The big one out there is Bright Local. And that's something I always incorporate for client local SEO campaigns because it really is for us that differentiating factor. But what ends up happening for established businesses is that you'll spend months and months building these citations and your business listing seemingly doesn't move. And then one day overnight, it will jump multiple places, sometimes even up to number one. You you know, all the other factors being equal. So those citations are super important. That is really about the consistency of how your business appears across a number of different sites. So some citation sites are fairly obvious, like Yelp, Yellow Pages, stuff like that. But there's hundreds and hundreds of ones out there you've probably never heard of and probably will never need to know the name of, but they are important and they do contribute to your local SEO in a meaningful way. So they're worth doing. Behavioral signals are pretty self-explanatory, as you can see, click-through rate, calls, check-ins, that kind of thing. And then the social signals is the other one. So of course, you're not gonna get backlinks from places like Facebook and Twitter because of course, they're no-follow links, but you do get some sort of, uh, you know, I guess you would call it air quotes link juice. That's probably the wrong term, but you do get some sort of indication from those social sites that Google picks up on, and that's a big deal. So this is essentially where I spend all of my time when setting up these local listings. I'm, I'm prioritizing these things as best I can for each individual case. Now, like I mentioned, I will take you behind the scenes here in just a minute and show you the stats for what this business looks like after just seven days. But what we've done in this particular case is basically fill out everything we can in the Google business listing. So of course we've chosen our category, like I already mentioned, by its very nature, the keyword is in the business title. We've added photos, we've responded to reviews, we've encouraged people to leave reviews, basically everything that we could do on that listing. And then of course on the site, we have our name, we have the address and we have the phone number very consistently through the site. And these are all things that are helping contribute to the successes we've seen so far in Google business. So of course this, this heading right here is an H1. So we have our business name, not of course the full thing, but that's okay. And then the word coffee. And then we also have our city name down here as well. So it's all these little things that are contributing to it in an organic way to make those listings appear more strongly. So at this point, let's go ahead and take a peek behind the curtain. So if you've not seen the Google business listing dashboard, this is what your page go is going to look like eventually as you start to get some results to the page. Now, if you're interested in a more in-depth tutorial on this, how to go from the very beginning, definitely let me know and I will consider doing something more in-depth. So what we really care about is the insights tab. So what I'm gonna do is go over here and these are gonna be basically the last seven days. You'll see these numbers reflected in some graphs in just a moment. But again, at the time of recording this video, this business has only been open for seven business days and the numbers are already wild. Our area in terms of population is not that big. The specific area that this coffee shop is in has a population of around 4,000 people. The surrounding city, the bigger one, which is just a tad further away, that one has around 20,000 people. I share that to give you some context because first of all, the city is not big, which means that you would think maybe there wouldn't be a whole lot of business for this sort of thing, but there absolutely is. And then second of all, that means that there's not a whole lot of competition in the area, which makes our lives easier. So if you're in a less populated city, it is a bit of a give and take. Yes, maybe 
maybe you have less search volume, but you also have less competitors typically, which is generally a win-win for you. Now that dynamic does change in bigger cities, but I think that there's still very much an opportunity for Google business listings to be exceptionally powerful there as well. So as we look for this, so there's a few different things going on here. So this blue section is discovery. So people who found it searching based on the category product or service, not by using your name. So that's 1200 people in seven days have been at least, you know, exposed to this business, which is amazing. And then direct and branded are kind of vague. They, to me, are essentially the same thing, but you can see about 30% are finding the business based on branded terms. So that's probably a lot of the people, you know, friends and family that are searching for it online to kind of see how things are going. But we have a huge majority of the people who don't know the business yet and are seeing it and they're taking action, which we're gonna see reflected now. So next up, this says where customers view your business on Google. So listing on search, we're seeing 535 searches this month and listing on maps is 1,600, which is just absolutely incredible. So as I said, this business in their brick and mortar location hasn't been open that long. They were doing farmer's markets, but without a physical location prior to this. So that's why the business listing has existed for some time, but we didn't add things like the address and phone number and so on until basically the 12th. And then everything started to pop off right after that, as you can see, which is really, really incredible how fast it's just blown up. Now, I also want to share that this is with exactly $0 in ad spend anywhere. So there's been no Facebook ads, no Instagram, no Google ads of any kind, nothing paid except there was a physical print mailer that went out through the postal service. And that has been very effective as well. There probably is some crossover in this data with that mailer because people get the mailer, they probably turn around and Google search it or type in like, you know, coffee shop to try and find it. So this data probably does reflect that, but that's of course an extremely crucial piece of it that if people find out about that business in other ways, they're gonna look for it here as well. Then the customer actions is up next. So this one is interesting as well. So there's been 82 actions. And at the time of recording this video, the data is three days behind. So it is August 22nd right now. So there's still three full days that haven't showed up yet. But as you can see, we have 82 total actions up to that point. So 41 website visits, 36 direction requests, and five calls, which is awesome. Now I know for me, a lot of times what I'll end up doing is I pretty much know my area well enough that I will find a business. I might tap that request directions button, or I might know right where it is. So I'm going to see it on my listing on my phone and I'm just going to go there. So there, there is some bit of correlation here, I imagine, between people seeing it on search, not actually taking an action necessarily, but then showing up to the business or perhaps seeking it out in another way. Maybe they then go to the website, click the call button there, which of course wouldn't register here in the Google Insights. Direction requests is another interesting one. So you can see this says 19 from the area called Wright, which is a portion of Fort Walton Beach. And it doesn't show us any other data, which is kind of interesting. So we have 36 requests for directions here, but only 19 show up. So I'm not sure exactly what that is. We have very few phone calls, but the other interesting bit of information here is the photo views. So you can see this red line indicates businesses like you. We started adding some photos a few days before we were really trying to push the listing and it started to pick up. And then when everything started to pop off, then it really started exploding. And of course this is behind. So there's two days here that register as zero views, which is almost certainly not the case, but you can see there's hundreds and hundreds of views. It accounts to 5,000 photo views, which is amazing. So what's really, really cool about this is if we go over here to the photos tab, you can start to see some of this reflected. So on this cover photo seen by 1200 people, 150 people saw these interior shots. This picture right here, that's actually my hand. Hello, Jonathan's hand, 251 views on that. And so it's just so incredible. It's amazing to see this having come to fruition with essentially no effort other than really taking the time to make a quality listing. And of course, on their side of the business, they went through everything and made the brand perfect in every sense. So that is something to be said. And also they have a great product. I'm obviously a bit biased, but their coffee is fantastic and everybody seems to love it so far. So that really resonates. That's another piece to this is that all of these factors are completely contingent on whether you have a viable business or not. So that's something to consider as well, but a conversation for a different time. So as we come back to this conversation, the whole objective here is to kind of understand what is it gonna to take to get your business listed on Google? Like I already mentioned, we've essentially done this with no ad spend whatsoever. It's really just taken a lot of time. And of course I have the expertise to be able to help guide them through this process. And what I think it will continue to do for them for an extended period of time is going to be just invaluable for their business. Now, this is not to say that Google My Business is the end all be all. It's not necessarily the only place to spend your time. Instagram has already been incredibly popular for them. 
but it is a facet. Like for me, I'm not gonna go to Instagram and seek out a business. Maybe after the fact, or maybe a second set of you know opinions for myself, I might go there. The first place I'm gonna go is Google. I'm gonna read the reviews, look at their website, those sorts of things. And so I can't reiterate enough the power of the Google business listing. As you've seen, there's been thousands and thousands of views on this business in just seven days, and it didn't cost us anything. It took a few hours of time, we went through a few batches of photos and really kind of tried to make everything look good, but now customers are gonna help us run with that. They're gonna post photos and they're gonna post reviews, which is already happening. And so of course, this is kind of a more 40,000 foot overview of Google My Business, but I wanna try to reiterate with a real example, this is a real business, what it might mean if you take the time to really optimize this, whether it be for yourself or for your clients. Now in a much smaller way, my web design agency also has a Google My Business listing and the search volumes are much, much lower. We get maybe 120 or 150 searches a month on Google Business, but that is a huge element for us. We get people all the time that tell us, found out about your business through Google. We typed in web designers near me and you guys popped up. So in my opinion, it is essentially invaluable for you to be on Google My Business. Like I mentioned, if you have interest in me walking through a more detailed tutorial on this setup start to finish, including things on your website that might play a factor in your Google local rankings, definitely let me know and I will consider that. Not sure in what capacity just yet that looks like, but I am very much interested in putting that together if that's something you guys would like to see. I would also love your feedback on this video. Was it too basic or was it helpful? So definitely let me know on that. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in a future video.